able to catch the recording? I'm recording now. And yeah. then am I able to share screen? I will make you a co-host and then you can. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test to see how well you know your Zoom. And I'm going to put something in the chat for you. I am going to load up a form, which I would love to find out where you are all at using this form. So I'm going to type it in the chat there. All you've got to do is just click on the link in the chat and you can fill out the form. And while you're doing that, um, I will have a look to see at the responses because it's always interesting to see, you know, who has got internet, who doesn't have internet. Um, perhaps I should have asked if it's fiber or not. That does make a slight difference. And we can talk about why that is so important. And, and um, there are a couple of issues that obviously a lot of people are interested in. So hopefully you are able to access that form. I see we already have one response in. I didn't ask for names and I didn't ask for email addresses, so don't worry. Um, I see that WhatsApp, Calendar, Netflix, Showmax, all those things are available to some of you. Let's have a look to see what else is coming in. So what I've done is I've used a Google form. A Google form is a free form that you can create. And what it allows you to do is you can ask people to fill in information and then as they fill in the information it saves it all in a spreadsheet for you so i will show you what my spreadsheet looks like so you can actually have a look at the information i'm looking at here we go let's go to my screen is it sharing the correct one no that's not the one we wanted to share Let's try it again. It's misbehaving itself. It came and it went. It, 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 no, but that was the wrong sheet. Okay, so let's try that again. Uh, share screen. Here we go. All right, so this is the information that is coming in as we speak. So do you have access to the internet? Yes, you do. Is it uncapped? So most of you say yes. Some, or I've got one response over here that says no. Do you have a smartphone? Let's just have a look. Yes, all of you have smartphones. That is very interesting. Uh, if I have a look over here, most of you have got DSTV, Showmax, Netflix. Um, a couple of you don't have access to Netflix. Uh, you want to learn more on Zoom. You want to become more proficient. Uh, you want to learn everything and some of you are open. That is fantastic. And, and this is real time. As the answers are coming in, this allows me to see what it is that you are learning uh, and that you are, or what, are the, what is it that you know and what is it that you don't know. All right. So now that I know a little bit more about you, let me give you some background. Uh, I'm an educator. Um, I've been teaching for about 26 years. And the pandemic arrived early 2020 and officially made me unemployed. Uh, the reason it made me unemployed is because I teach in the classroom. I run teacher workshops. I physically go and do events. And now we were not allowed to leave our homes. So most people would sit there and go, well, that's the end of my career. Uh, time to give up. For me, this was my opportunity to flex my technological skills because I've been doing this for quite a few years and I felt that it was time to use what I knew and put it to, to uh, effective use. So what happened is I started connecting with students around the world and teachers around the world, running workshops online, and eventually schools started teaching online, but not all the teachers knew how to do it. So I started running workshops for teachers on how to use Zoom effectively. And what I found interesting is that it started opening up a whole new group of opportunities. So for example, instead of teaching in schools in the Western Cape, I'm now teaching in schools and countries around the world. Um, and the only thing that was stopping me was a pandemic. 
Because you see, if I wanted to physically go to Johannesburg and run classes there, I have to get on a plane and fly there. Otherwise, I need to go and employ someone in Johannesburg to go and do it. Now I can do it all from the comfort of my own home and I can have students, which I do every week. I can have students from Belgium, England, South Africa, all joining my weekly classes. And if there are 10 students in a class or 100 students in the class, the amount of effort that is required doesn't change. Maybe I need to be a little bit more vigilant with the number of participants in a Zoom call, but generally it's much easier for me to connect with all of these people. And the other issue is that sometimes some of the students say, well, we want Mr. S teaching us, not someone else. And now everyone gets me. So it's exhausting because I'm teaching for many hours on end. I'm running lots of workshops. I'm giving presentations at conferences. And at the end of the day, I want to show people that technology can make your life a lot easier. Now, there might be quite a few of these things that you've seen, maybe you haven't seen. Because you are all Zoom experts, I do want to teach you one very cool tip. Some of you join the Zoom calls and leave your microphones on. And then all of a sudden, you sit there having a discussion with someone and, and I've attended a couple of funerals, sadly, where we've had people talking in the background. And of, of course, they might say some wonderful things about the dearly departed. And then might say some not so wonderful things about the people at the actual funeral. So I think it's very important that we learn that um, switching your microphone off by muting yourself is very important. But one little trick I want to teach you that a lot of you don't know, maybe you don't know, is that when you want to speak, some of you sit there and you fiddle looking for the microphone to switch it on. So a very cool tip is if you take a look at a keyboard, and I'll hold one up for you so you can have a look. Here is a keyboard. You have the long space bar on the bottom. If you hold the space bar button down, what it does is, is it unmutes you. And then when you let it go, it mutes you again. So if you want to test it out, you can touch the space bar while you are there and it'll unmute you. There, I see Stacy's got it. And then when you let go again, then it mutes you again. So sometimes you just want to say a few words, but not sit there and click on the mute button and unmute. So you just simply push the space bar to unmute yourself. You can speak. And then when you finish speaking, let go of the space bar and then boom, you're back to mute again. So that way you could stay muted. But if you just want to speak a little bit, however, if you are going to be speaking as much as me, then maybe stay unmuted if possible. Um, a lot of people are obviously using various programs to make themselves look a little bit more interesting. Uh, I am using a wonderful program called Snap Camera. I don't expect you all to be able to use it. But what is quite nice about Snap Camera is I can change my appearance from a uh, bearded tuxedo person to a Greek god to perhaps a toilet roll king to a pilot to an astronaut. You can be anything you choose to be if you want to. And I think that that's quite a, a lovely little device when you are teaching kids, because obviously if you want to keep people involved in the story and you want to take on different characters, that is pretty useful. But now I want to go on to something completely different. The first thing I want to talk to you about is the Google products. For those of you that have got a Gmail address, all the Google products are free. Google Docs, Google Forms, Google Sheets, Google Calendar, they're all free. And I know that you all want to take notes. I can see Philippa Wiener is taking notes. She's writing at an incredible pace, but you don't have to because I've made notes for you and I'm going to share the document with you right now so that you don't have to make notes. You can just keep an eye on the document that I'm sending you. Let me quickly get the link for you. Here we go. I have the link and I'm going to share that in the chat with you right now. So if you click on the link, you will have the Google Doc that I'm working on. 
and that way we can all work together through the same document. And I'm going to share my screen so you can see the Google Doc that I'm referring to. Here we go. It is the Zoom workshop. It's got my email address there in case any of you would like to email me. And if I do this, then it'll just put a hyperlink there, which means that when you click on that blue underlined thing, it will automatically open up an email if you want to send me an email. So the one trick that I wanted to show you is that obviously a space bar will unmute you temporarily. I also want to say that if you register for a Zoom account, a free Zoom account, you can conduct Zoom calls with your family. The only limitation is that the sessions are 40 minutes. But here comes the good news. As soon as the session ends, you can click on the link and restart the session again and carry on your conversation. So just because you are limited to 40 minutes doesn't mean you cannot work around that. So that I find is quite useful for those of you that would want to communicate with family and grandchildren around the world. Zoom calls have been very, very useful. One of the things we've been doing is running events like birthday parties and stuff online. And that allows family to bring in grannies and grandpas and aunties and uncles and cousins from all over the world. And they are able to join in on the session live. And it means that you're not just only taking part in a, a lecture like some of you would be attending, but we also get to play fun party games and things online, which uh, makes the sessions a little bit more bearable. Um, I wanna talk about productivity right now. And productivity is how to use certain things to your advantage. So the first example I want to mention is Google Docs. I've just sent you a link to a Google Doc. I'm going to show you how I did it. And I'm looking over here and I can see how many people are reading it at the moment. So if I go over here, um, I'm just going to create an, a brand new Google Doc. I'm going to go to Google Docs. I've put the link in, in the document for you. And I'm going to start with a blank document. And my document is going to be called um, Workshop for CJSA. And of course, like Microsoft Word, if you want to make that bold, if you want to increase the size, if you want to change the font, you can. So it kind of is a word processor. We can even put in the middle of the document. And then over here, I want to write let's say an article about the seniors, but you know, I don't feel like typing. Do you know what would be really useful? If I could actually dictate and it would type it for me, would it be able to do that? Hmm, I wonder, Let's go to tools, voice typing. Let's see what happens. Once upon a time, there was a center in the middle of Seapoint. And this particular center was headed by Diana Sochen. Almost. Uh, let me take that part out. This particular place runs many Zoom workshops and you as a member are able to access speakers from all over the world and you get to hear about topics that you are interested in. Now, if I click on the microphone, then it stops. Oops, there we go. Let me take that part out. So now I can edit my document and change that to Sochen over there. And all of a sudden, I've got my entire document typed out for me. And I never even touched it with my hands until the very end to fix it. But now, how fast can I go? Well, let's see what happens. Super Cadrophagilistic Expialidocious. There was once a little girl who lived on a roof and she ate ice cream. And while she was eating ice cream, she was wearing a red hat. Hmm. 
boom. So what this did is it was able to keep up with me while I was dictating. Think about that from a productivity point of view, because now I've got my document and I think to myself, you know, it would be so nice if Ruth and Rebecca and Muriel decided that they could help me write this article. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to share. Let me save the name of the document. Okay, I'm going to go to share. And where it says share over here, I'm not going to restrict anyone. I want to change this part to make anyone an editor. So now anyone with the link is an editor. I'm going to copy this link. And I'm going to post it in the chat. Now watch what happens. Let's see if it works. If you click on that link, what will happen is I will see who's joining on the side here. If you haven't signed in, it just calls you anonymous, whatever. And you can start typing on my page while we are working here. So go for it. If any of you would like to add anything there, I see someone is editing the title. Uh, some of you might want to type in, thank you for most interesting. And of course, you can all edit it simultaneously. Can you imagine what this does from a productivity point of view? So now all of a sudden, you've been tasked to write an article, or you've been asked to put together uh, an event. You find five or six people that you want to collaborate with. You share the link with the document, but obviously make them editors. And all of a sudden, they are able to contribute towards that document. From a teaching point of view, if I'm going to be setting tests or writing papers, and I have five teachers in my department, we can all contribute. And guess what? I don't have to be on the computer to do that. Because if I share the screen right now, I'm going to share my screen. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto my phone. And if I go onto my phone and I find Google Docs, because I have Google Docs on my phone, I'm going to have a look over here to see the latest documents that have been opened. I'm going to click on this one because it's on my phone. And while it's there, I'm going to go like this and go, hi, everyone. This is Steve. And I'm doing this on my phone. So Google Docs can be on your smartphone. It can be on your computer. And you can work on the document. You can also dictate. I can also go like this. I would like to add an extra memo to this particular document so that you can all get an understanding of how useful a Google Doc can be for most people. And what you'll notice is that all of a sudden, the dictation also works on your smartphone. So that was Google Docs in a, in a very brief introduction. You don't have to save your Google Doc. As you type, it is automatically saving. And you can always find the most recent ones whenever you're going to Google Docs so you know where to go. Now, some of you are very busy. You have incredible social lives and you have so many lectures to attend at the seniors. So it would be really useful if the seniors had a calendar. Diana, do you have a calendar for the seniors? You are muted. There we go. I am, I am sending out a weekly um, calendar of events to everybody, but it's, it's, I have to compile it every week and send it out. So now what would happen if you went like this? 
This might change the way you do things. I will share my screen again. I'm going to go to a thing called Google Calendar. I've put it in your document for you. I happen to have a shortcut for it because obviously I work with it all the time, but I'll just type it in over here. Google Calendar. Here we go. And Google Calendar is a simple calendar feature. But what you can do is you can go like this. I can add a calendar. And the calendar is going to be called CJSA events. Okay. And I'm going to create it. I'm going to just put this test because then I can delete it afterwards. Create calendar. So I have now created a calendar called CJS events. And it is now over here on my calendar list. I'm going to go into the calendar. Let's have a look. I want to make this available to the public. So I'm going to tick that and make it available to the public. I'm going to get a shareable link. Here it is. Copy. And I'm going to share this link in the chat with all of you. So let's go to the chat. Let's see if the chat is working. There we go. You should have a link to the calendar now. And what this means is that if I want to post something, so let's pretend I am Diana and I would like to post an event. I'm going to go on Tuesday the 6th. There is a workshop for CJSA. It is done by Steve Sherman. And let's just go to the details. The details are here is the Zoom link. Um, let's just also add in over here that it's at 9.45. And I must also just tell it that it's at 9.45. So I'm going to go and choose 9.45 over there. And here is the Zoom link. And I can add the Zoom link in. Let me just quickly grab a Zoom link from the... Uh, we had one earlier. Let's see. It was over here. I'll just do this. And I'll show you why this is so useful. There's my Zoom link that Diana sent me, and I'm going to save it. Now, I've made it this color because then I know that this is a CJSA event. Uh, the blue ones are my events. So, for example, at one o'clock, I'm doing a Skype call with uh, a group, well, it was actually a Zoom call with a group of students in Turkey. And tonight I'm teaching first, second and third graders in New York at the Museum of Mathematics. And what is interesting is that my wife has a calendar too under Michelle. And I have shared my calendar with her. She has shared her calendar with me. And every time she puts something on the calendar, I can see that, for example, there is something happening here and there's going to be a clash. So maybe I need to rearrange because I know that she is, she knows someone called Bram is having an op from 9.30 to 10.30. So maybe I shouldn't be doing a workshop for 9.45 if that was the case. So you can now create a CJSA calendar Everyone adds it to their calendar. Of course, I can untick it, and now none of the CJS things appear on my calendar. But if I click over here, I can have a look for, this is today, but I can also look for the month. Or let's have a look for the week. These are all the CJSA ones, the brown ones, and I can tell exactly, and obviously I can change the color, it doesn't have to be brown. I can tell exactly when all the CJ events are happening for this particular week. And all Diana has to do is update it on her phone or on her computer, and you all get a brand new update on your computer without any extra work. It's already on your calendar. So from a productivity point of view, your children, your grandchildren, if they want to check to see whether you are busy on a Wednesday or a Thursday afternoon, you can fill in all your little dates and times, and then you can share your calendar with them. And then straight away, they will know what you're doing on Wednesday. Uh, if they want to know what you're doing on Thursday, on 
Saturday, on Sunday, they can check. And of course, if I ever want to create something for CJSA, I get to choose who's doing it. So is this going to be a living maths event, which is my work event? Am I doing it as CJSA or as Steve Sherman? So if I do it as CJSA, then all the people who've got the CJSA calendar will be able to see those updates. And I think that's a pretty powerful tool. So for those of you that are interested, Google Calendar will certainly make you a little bit more productive uh, in life. But now I know that you want to learn a little bit more than just productivity. So I want you to talk about creativity. How many of you are using the internet to be creative? So I don't know if you are aware of this, but there is a wonderful website. It's free called canva.com. I'm going to, I have shared the link in the document, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. And I'm going to share my screen quickly. Here we go. Let's go to share screen. Canva is basically an online site that allows you to design anything. So now one of you is going to a birthday. You want to create a birthday card. Let's do it. I'm going to click on card. Um, is it a birthday card? Let's Maybe it's an 80th birthday card. I'm going to type in 80th birthday. Let's see what comes up. Okay, it's not an 80th birthday card, but look at this. It says 60. So you know what I can do? Because it says free over here, I can go like this change that to 80 and i'm going to put here diana blow out your candle 80 that's a lot of candles happy let me change that bit over there happy 80th birthday you know what i need diana are there any particular things that you like um are you interested in dogs cats food i don't know anything in particular you on mute. There we go. Uh, let's say babies. Babies. So I'm going to go over here to elements. Click on elements. I'm going to type in babies. And I'm going to grab this one right here and stick that over there. I'm going to stick this one over. No, let's choose this one here. And I'm going to stick that over there. Let me take this one out. I can resize this one. Here we go. I can resize this one to fit the corner quite nicely. There we go. And what I've done is I've created a birthday card in a matter of seconds. And then I think to myself, well, you know what would be really nice? I actually want to put in a photograph of someone. So I go to photos, I mean, uploads. And I'm going to upload an image. So if I go to upload media, I'm going to choose one from my device. Let's just choose a photo from pictures. Let's see what pops up over here. Uh, over there, maybe there's a picture of someone. Here we go, of Abba. I'll use that one. And I'm going to quickly click on open. It's loaded up the Abba picture. And what do I do? I can then drag that onto the card and make that the new background if I wanted to. Now, here comes the cool part. I now want to send that birthday card to someone. I can download it as a PDF or I can download it as a JPEG. You can play around with the size and the quality. And if I click on download, it prepares my design. And here is my card. I'm going to save it under pictures. Let's see if I can find the pictures folder over here. And I'm going to call it CJSA B Day card. Done. And of course, if you want to pay a, an amount of money, then you get access to everything for free. 
But remember, you could do most of the stuff for free. And I don't mean just do a card. If I now go to the home page, I can do <coughs> a presentation, marketing, video, social media. I can do all these things over here. I can design my own Zoom virtual background. And if you design your own Zoom virtual background, you can put CJS logo. Uh, here's one, for example, that someone did, online activist. I'm going to put here online. Let's put here CJSA seminar. Uh, we'll put it here 2021. So let's pretend that's my background. I can now download it and save it. And then I can swap my background out and use that as a background, which I think, let's put the CJSA background. And if I go into my settings quickly, I'm going to go to, where is my, can I do it from here? I think I should be able to do it. Here we go. Virtual background. I'm going to add a virtual background, add image. I'm going to go to pictures. I'm going to type in CJ, SA background. I'm going to open that one. I think that's the one that we wanted. Let's see. It should pop up any second. Maybe I should make my screen a little bit larger. Uh, C for CJSA. Here we go. There's my seminar background. And now I'm giving a professional talk to you with my CJSA background. And that took very little effort. I created in a matter of seconds. So for those of you that are looking for productivity, you can go and use Canva, create posters. If you're having an event, Diana, and you want to advertise a guest speaker, boom, you could put together a poster in under two minutes. It's free. And I thought that some of you might find that useful. So we've got about four minutes left. Let's see what else I wanted to show you. The other thing that I wanted to show you is Pinterest. And for those of you who do not know Pinterest, you can snap your hand right now because you should be ashamed of yourselves. Pinterest is basically a collection of a gazillion brilliant ideas in one place. So you sign up for Pinterest and you say to yourself, you know what, I am interested in getting, and I'll show you what I did. I'm gonna to go to the homepage. Uh, let's see if it'll allow me to do a search. I am interested, here we go. I am interested in, and I was just testing it out, Yamilkas. I thought if I was going to knit or crochet a yamulka, wouldn't it be nice if I could get ideas for patterns? So I go to Pinterest, I type in yamulkas, and no shortage of ideas. Some of these are pictures, but some of them will give you plans. So I want to know how to crochet, I want to crochet pattern free. Ah, let's look at this one. Is this one going to give me the pattern? Let's see. No, that one is ordering. Ah, this one over here. This one is giving me the actual pattern. So I can download the pattern. And if I have a look, it starts showing a whole bunch of other ideas that I can start to use to crochet a kippah. So you can literally get ideas on anything. So someone type in the chat something that you are interested in anything you like don't be shy because pinterest has got it all let's have a look to see what's coming up in the chat first one to type in something rock painting thank you stacy let's have a look at rock painting rock painting have a look at these are these not the most amazing ideas i actually think they're magnificent so here you can get ideas. And if I click on this, they might even take me to the website of the people who created those rock paintings and give me a whole bunch of ideas.
So here, for example, free your spirit, be nice, rise and shine. You can hide those away. You can do mandala, not mandala, mandala rock paintings. And of course, learn how to do them. They're going to give you all these ideas. So if you are looking for a hobby, it doesn't matter what your hobby is. You just have to type it in here. I don't know if you are interested in, um, throw another idea out. We've got a minute. I'm sure we can do one more. Let's have a look at the chat to see who's got an idea. Khamsas. I like Khamsas. Let's see if they know what a Khamsa is. Khamsa. Oh, look at that. Boom. So now you want Khamsa ideas. You can get a whole bunch. Uh, some of these, for example, are blank templates. So you can download the template and then decorate it yourself. And then you can use that for your crafts uh, or your arts and crafts, whatever it is that you like. This person over here is doing the, the stained glass or the tiles, which I think is quite cool. So there's no shortage of ideas when it comes to Pinterest. And then the best part is if you find something that you like, you can save these ideas. Boom, 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 boom. And whenever you want easy access to them, you can just go along and look at your Pinterest uh, things that you've been saving. Here I saved a Star of David. Here there was a hand-painted rock. I've been saving a few of these things so that in case I'm interested in learning more about them, I can go and save it. Boom, it's now saved. I like this one, saved. And I can access all the things that I've been saving at any point. Uh, if I go along to my Pinterest over here, It'll just show me all the things that I've been saving. And when you want to go to the next thing, you can actually create your own Pinterest board and post arts and crafts ideas. And then people can start following your board to get ideas. So maybe CJSA wants to create a board of art ideas. And then people can click on that board and follow the board. And all of a sudden, they get all these great ideas. And if other people are members of that board, you start to generate a much larger number of ideas from all those people collaborating and sharing. But that means that unfortunately, we have come to the end of our session. I would love to show you more tips and tricks because there are so many amazing things. And, and of course, for those of you that have not got Netflix, I'm not going to tell you that if your family uh, happen to have Netflix, uh, they might not be using all of the Netflix identities. I'm just saying if they accidentally sign you up for the last identity, you could have access to Netflix on your phone or on your computer or on your smart TV. And maybe we can talk about that for next time, uh, how to put DSTV, how to put um, Showmax and all those things onto your TV so that you can actually watch them at home. But really, I would love to chat further, but unfortunately I have to run because I've got to be at school. Um, and then afterwards I'm popping in to fetch something at Highland's house. So on that note, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you found that useful. And uh, if there's anything, you've got my email address. It's on the Google Doc. You're welcome to uh, contact me. So, Steve, thanks, because I know that you have to run. We've really enjoyed this morning. And I'll chat to you offline to see if we can do another one. Sure. No stage. problem. Yeah. And if there's okay. anything in particular that they would like to learn, I can show them a whole bunch of really cool things that uh, will make them far more productive and, and will impress the socks off their grandchildren. Okay, with pleasure. We will definitely do so. So anybody got any ideas, they can put it in the chat line now. You don't have to go because Steve's going and then we'll contact him again and see whether we can um, have another date. Good luck. And Steve, thank you. We really do appreciate it. You're absolutely welcome. Have a great thank week. you. Okay, okay, you too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. The rest of you can stay on for a minute if you want to unmute yourselves and talk. Um, reflect on what we've done this morning and maybe speak about it. Anybody want to, to say anything? You're muted. Sylvia, unmute yourself.
Thank you very much for a lovely presentation. We've learned a lot. Oh, good. I'm so pleased you've learned. I hope to see you using it then, Sylvia. Well, <laughs> you've got to have a computer for it. Yes, you've got one. So you can, yeah. Okay, if anybody wants to put in the chat line um, anything else they'd want to learn um, so that I can speak to him. Yeah, sure. Can you? Can you Oh, sorry, I wanted to can say I, something. Can, you, okay. can I mention something? Yes, sure. Is it possible to tell us more about Achuzat Yisrael in Israel, please? Okay, but that's not what Steve would talk about. No, just, well, no it's just something that I'd like to know more about, about this home in Israel. What is it called? I'm not sure of it. Sorry, give it to me and I'll write it down. Achuzat Yisrael. What is that? It's a home that, we, well, it's, it's a home in, in Israel that we work for, for children that come from, you know, underprivileged homes and, so and who where they are. So would be able to tell us about the, it, Sylvia? The North Zion. Sorry? The North. The North would be able to uh, tell us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll find out for you with pleasure. You, from from, from Emuna. You know the em, Emuna. 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 Okay. All right. Yeah, because Shugi, we, right. we donate towards that. Okay. Shirley, uh, uh, you want make, to... can, can I make a comment? I found this talk enormously interesting, but I think I got a lost a little bit along the way in how to get started. Do we have to go via Google? I'm actually going to have to phone him because I can't give you that answer unless okay. Stacey or Rebecca know. Um, but uh, but I'll, I'll have to find out and then and let the people who are on know how to get back onto the. I think you can go to Google Docs, but I'm not sure where he posts that document for us. Yes, well, this know? is the thing, you know, so that yeah. we can get onto the calendar and onto Pinterest, Pinterest, and all that stuff. Yeah. So okay. you can go. copy the, the links and I'll put it in a Word document and see what I can do. Mm. But if you go, if you want to start your own Google Doc, you can go to Google and just type in Google Docs and then it'll pop up and you can do your own typing and dictation and all that. Or things like Pinterest, you can go to Google and then type in Pinterest and it'll take That's you. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Very Google is the first step. Right. So Marilyn, um, the, the, this has been recorded and we will post the recording once it comes through. So you could listen to this again. Any other questions, anyone? Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So um, let's just see what else is on for, for this week so it can give you some, some idea. Um, Tomorrow there's Ageless Grace at 10 a.m. For, for anyone who wants to do exercises. And then in the afternoons, the Knitting Circle with um, the movie that they're watching. Uh, the movie is called Shrugam. And I think they're on, on, on to season two already, but it's been really enjoyable. Then on Thursday morning, we've got Mensch with Jodie Ramsey and, and it's creating a positive change in social activities in South Africa. Very interesting and that they're doing amazing work. So I urge you all to come on at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning. And then Thursday afternoon, this, this week is Yom HaShoah week um, where we are um, remembering and honoring our Holocaust survivors. And we have a special program on Thursday afternoon for those of you who want to take part in that. And then our Yiddish classes are back this Friday morning at 10 o'clock. So please join in. And don't forget, this afternoon at 12.15, there's a lunchtime Abraham Talks with our um, UK crowd that come on and give us these fantastic talks. Uh, Amanda, what's on today? I can't remember. Is Amanda still on? Yeah, I'm here. I'll, I'll get it now, Diana. Just give me two minutes, please. I'll give it to you now. So there's a full and active week. Apart from everything else that's on, we've got something on for you every single day. Um, so that's really all Amanda will tell you now. 
How are you all? Is everybody coping? You managing? Absolutely. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Do you all have a good Pesach? I'm glad Lovely. it's over. <laughs> yeah. Still eating matzah. Finishing off all the matzah. <laughs> oh, um, Marilyn, I'm not sure if sugar where they where they are airing it at any other time. Um, we have got one of our um, social workers has downloaded it for the members. But if you join in, it's it's something that you can pick up. I, am I right, Rebecca? You can pick it up. Mm. Yeah. So if you want to join on, it's really worth watching. Um, Hi, morning, Diana. Oh, sorry. Hi, Monique. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, you can join anytime. You'll be able to pick up the storyline very quickly. We're on the second season at the moment. We just started it. Okay. So the, the presenter at 1215 today is um, Lord Young's career. Um, the, in the chat line is the Zoom link. Amanda's posted it. And their sessions are absolutely fabulous. They're an hour every single Tuesday. They are now an hour behind us, not two hours behind us as they were in the UK. So it's at 12.15. 12.15. They actually yeah. start at 12.30, but they come on at 12.15. And his topic is China, friend or foe. Very interesting today. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sure that we'll see some of you at lunchtime today, hopefully, and go on to Google Docs and see if you can just um, get into it now. And otherwise, I will speak to Steve and find out if he can send us that document that I can forward it to everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. And uh, we'll see you during the week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very everybody. much. Go Thank on. you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Bye.